TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are live, but by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. As you see right behind me, man, the little warning screen, man. There's going to be a lot of this warning screen today. I think every video is going to deserve this, but I don't know. Don't forget twitch.com. You know what I'm saying? That's where you can catch any live and previous recordings and things of that nature. Uh, the username's at the bottom of the screen. And we also got Patreon. Listen, if you're not in the Patreon fam, it's okay. I understand. But you should be. Because we watch five shows. And anything that we watch that doesn't make it to YouTube or gets blocked or anything, it goes there. So it's unlimited content. It's like a thousand videos on there. Whole series of React is crazy. In my opinion, it's worth it. Uh, I'm trying to... Let me see. This is a uh, cold case investigators solving Britain's sex crime season one episode two. Don't watch it. Oh oh oh! Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Talk to me. Morning, police Good. officers. Is it Alec? It is, yes. Can we come in for a second? Oh, yes. oh. Uh, do you want to just go through? Yeah. There's a few of us. What's wrong? Just go in the living room and we'll explain. Yeah. I'm catching the vibe of what's second. going on here. Hi, Alec. Hello there. Um, I work for the Major Crime Unit, which is based at Hertfordshire Police. Yes. Um, I've come to arrest you, okay? Um, I'll explain everything that's going to gonna that. happen, all right? You are being arrested right now on suspicion of, um, there's three incidences. The first is on the 7th of uh, April 2002 that you indecently assaulted and kidnapped in Harpenden. Uh, then on the 19th, listen, listen carefully and we'll explain everything. Yeah. What's this? Uh, the 19th of June 2002 that you indecently assaulted and kidnapped uh, in Harpenden. And that uh, on the 17th of March 2004, you kidnapped uh, in Harpenden again, Georgia. All right? You're under arrest for those. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned. Something which you later on in court, and anything you do say may be given. I'm not going to lie to you. Somebody sent me this video, and, and nothing that's going on is funny. It's just, I did not read the title. Somebody just sent it to me. I forgot where they sent it to me. On Instagram. Matter of fact, if you have requests and you send them on Instagram, I've been looking at my Instagram DMs lately. So send them. In an evidence, okay? Oh, you know, this is gonna be wild. Yeah, good little warning screen. Hello there. I'm part of an investigation team in Hertfordshire who are reinvestigating an offence which happened 20 years ago. I think she gets dragged sort of over there. Yeah. Into the woods that side. Yeah. The statistics of the rape are not the greatest, but because the DNA development has improved so much, the chances of us getting convictions are so much better than they ever were. You've buried it for so long. So this is cold case investigators is what this is called. You've so continued on with your life. But me. yeah, something like that just doesn't really go away. Using our modern day techniques, we can now 
reassess these cases, our success rates increase enormously when obtaining DNA profiles from samples that historically hadn't succeeded. We normally don't be watching the um, intro, but I've never seen this show, so I'm watching. I'm going to be arresting you, okay, on suspicion of rape. So you have to say it again. If you let me explain, I'll explain it to you. Obviously, we've recovered DNA matter. Mm -hmm. right. Understand DNA? No comment. It's a message to anybody who knows what they've done, that we will get them and we will catch them. We don't just stop because we can't find a lead. We will carry on. These are some vile people, man, that do this to, like, I, I don't condone this at all. And I'm, I, I don't wish jail upon nobody, but I, you know what I'm saying? Every contact leaves a trace. It's never that serious to do that to nobody. Never. Never. No means no. Maybe means no. I don't know means no. Only yes means yes. Simple. <laughs> What is this operation reactive reactivate 2002 2002 2002 2004 attacks and threes so now that you've been cautioned our intention is to take you to a police station so that you can be interviewed yeah if you want to pop some clothes on yeah, and these them, get you out of here thank, thank yeah, you thank you I'm just so shocked. You're a bit shocked. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate surprised. that. Yeah, obviously. I appreciate yeah. that. We can explain it all to you. I yeah, come on. Let's, right. let's get you dressed okay. up, upstairs. You know that Operation Reactivate is the investigation um, into three offences which happened between 2002 and 2004 involving three teenage girls who were dragged off the street and um, two of them sexually assaulted. <sighs> we have full DNA profiles for the two offences in 2002 but no DNA profile for the 2004 offence. Leave your phone. Yeah, I, I believe it's going to the toilet. Is that all right? Um, okay. Let's get you dressed first. Are you absolutely I, desperate, are you? Well, I need to go uh, properly. OK, uh, we'll have to stay with you, yeah, um, that's unfortunately. Okay. Yes, I understand. The breakthrough moment for the investigation team came when we received some intelligence to say that Alec Housden was potentially the offender in our case. Just make sure he's got nothing on him. Do you want to come around this way? We know that he's not on the DNA database, but when we looked at him and where he lived, proximity to the scene, what he looked like, it was quite clear that that was certainly someone that we needed to go and speak to. We'll get his DNA turned round today, so because we've got a full profile on both girls, um, so we'll get that turned round probably by about ten o'clock tonight, and then we'll know 100. percent Wow. So, yeah. So, I'm not, comp like, you got a full profile on both girls from two, th what year was this shot? Like, okay, because I know when that happens, you get a kit ran on you if you go to the hospital, right? And they, obviously, they keep that kit for evidence and probably, okay, that's okay. I just worked it out in my head. All right. I've just found an iPad. Uh, just leave it to one side. Yep. Alec, I'm not going to place handcuffs on you, but when we walk out, I'm going to take hold of your arm, okay? That's fine. You're just going to yeah, the car no, here. I'm not going to run no, that's fine. That's fine. Right. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yes, thank you. So we're looking for anything 2002. So devices, 2002 to 2004, paperwork, to do mainly with his employment or um, vehicles. Okay. He's clearly got kids and grandkids um, and has just recently married by the looks of things. So, um, yeah, on the face of it, a family man. On the face of it, anyway. This, pic this family picture... And that's why I'd be so suspicious of new people, man. Meeting new people, especially like, no offense, man. Meeting older, older people, like I just be. And I'm not saying it's just them. I'm just, I'm just in my mind. This is how I be working it out. I be suspicious. 
I'd be like, man, look, I don't know what you did back in your day. Salute to Jasper for the vow. I don't know, man. Cards, like family, lots of family stuff everywhere. People in general, let's just be real. New, old, I mean, young, old, it don't matter. I'm suspicious of everybody. I think people, a lot of the time, live double lives, don't they? Um, clearly, it was a long time ago, so potentially that's not something he does anymore, but that's in a way irrelevant because he's done it. We think he's done it. Whoever's done it has done it. And that be my whole thing. Like, who's really out here living double lives? You can only know if people are living double lives as you get close to them. And I don't got time to be getting close to nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, any red flag, any any universal signal, if I hear God speaking to me about you, you're done. <laughs> We're, I'm moving on. I'm not even going to play the game with you. He 5'3? Five, 5'7. Five, okay. I've been having suspicion of something. But anyway, I'm, 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 I'm the main thing you've done, I mean, everything's okay. I just wanted to give you um, my works number because obviously I'm not going to be able to, to go down. So can you just tell them that I'm ill? No, it's seven o'clock this morning. So I, I've come to help with their inquiries. The guy he talking. Um, I Bro know what he did. He talking about some I've come to help with their inquiries. So why can't you call him if you're coming to help? Like, she asked, is she asking the right question? I can't say, darling, because um, the, 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 the sergeant said I could ring, but not to say what it was about. Cap. Cap, cap, cap. So I have to be, I have to, you know, abide by those rules. But there's nothing to worry about. Well, the sergeant said that they would make sure that I guess, if they won't leave me here, they'll make sure I get home all right. Cap. He called as a cucumber. And, you know, that could be an indication of both things. Either he's good at it or he's not done it. Right, let me stop judging. We don't know. Is this so? Is this? No, this is not. Okay. We now need to really turn this round as soon as we can. But we are in a fortunate position that we can have. fast track forensic work carried out um, and that involves taking the suspect's DNA to a lab. It's a DNA sample taken from suspect to be tested fast time. They're expecting it, they will profile it and then they will compare it to the crime scene stains from 2002 and that will be done within the next 24 hours. You hope that you've got the right person, but until you actually get that written document, if you like, that says, yes, a billion to one, this is the right person, it's always a bit of an anxious wait. Please, could you say Not for me. me. Uh, Alec Richard Houston. Right, Alec. Now, these offences, obviously... Yes, yeah, so the fact that he didn't use his real full name on the show is a bit of a spoiler. Not for me. I'm not one of those people that'll hear his name and go Google it. <laughs> I just wait. Date back quite some time between April 2002 and March 2004. Or maybe y'all have heard of the story. I don't know. I haven't though. So the first one happened on the 7th of April 2002 at approximately half past five in the evening. So she says that she approached the bridge and I've seen a silver car which I believe to be a Vauxhall Astra. Okay. Have you ever owned a silver Astra? Uh, no comment. And this male grabbed me from behind with his right hand. He put his hand over my mouth. He just said, don't scream and I won't hurt you. I said, are you going to rape me? Are you going to hurt me? He said, no, I'm not going to rape you. I just want to touch you and you to touch me. He then started kissing me on my mouth. I kept my mouth closed, kept trying to put his tongue in my mouth. He has pulled the top up to reveal my bra, which too has been being pushed above my breast. He started kissing my right breast and began to pendle my left breast. He took his willy out, which was erect. 
I said, I'm not going to stop that. He said, no, you don't have to. He has put my left hand around his willy and I have begun to masturbate him. Would that be something that you would do? No comment. Okay. This is peak. Do you I have any involvement uh... in this? No, I don't. Would you be able to provide me with an account of your whereabouts on this date? No comment. First and foremost, a couple of things. I'm always going to, I don't know if I've said this on stream already, but I'm always going to pick my daughter up from school and drop her off. There's nothing that she can do to like defer that. You know what I'm saying? I have to see you go in school and I have to see you in the car when you're done. You know what I'm saying? I'll pick up you. Your friends could get in too, but you're going to get in the car. Ain't no walking home. Ain't no walking to school. If you need to go somewhere after school, I'll take you. Your mama take you. Somebody will take you that I know. Somebody that's family will take you. You know what I'm saying? We're not doing that. Ain't no sleepovers. If you need to go to your friend's house, your your friend, your one of your homegirl's houses, I will drop you off and I will pick you up. This is very simple. And see, I'm, I'm one of them people that, hey, listen, if they get to doing some weird stuff, you don't participate and you call me and I'm coming to get you. Leave your location on. I got it. <laughs> Simple as that for me. And this was what happened on Wednesday, the 19th of June, 2002. Can you remember where you were on that date? And no comments. So she's been placed in the car and she's been driven up Piggott's Hill back near the sewage works. Coincidental with the first offence, he then got out of the car and came round the car and got me out. And that's when I started hysterically crying all the way down. But I started even more hysterically crying and I couldn't breathe. Like properly, he had his hand around my mouth and he was like behind me. It'd be but possible it... to stop for a second, I feel a bit sick. I think it's just, what you think you're saying is not very nice. No. Can I, could I stop for a second? A just five minute break or please. something. Please. Okay. That possible. We'll just pop you outside into okay. an adjacent room. I'll Thank just you. pause. I'll pause the interview. Fifteen. Right. And they said they don't got his DNA. This guy's DNA, but they got a sample of DNA off two of the girls. So they got to run his DNA to see if it matches. So we don't. Very graphic and it's upsetting. Okay. All sexual offences are horrific, but the 2002 offences were particularly because of the age and because of the nature and the force used. Two years later, in 2004, another young girl walking home from school is uh, dragged by a man off the street into a wooded area. The um, and it's 2004, bro. I feel like any time after 2000, you can't, you couldn't walk, like, but it was still, times were still, people were still used to the 90s, though, and I'm talking from an American perspective, but, like, and coming up, like, in the city, so it's, like, a little bit different, but still. The amount of similarities were such, and the location was so close to the 2002 attacks, we thought it was the same man for both offences. The difference in 2004 was the fact that a lady walking her dog saw this happening, heard the girl screaming, that she intervened and the man ran off. Georgia, tell me... This actual footage? And what, what's actually happened? Well, I was coming back from the network watch. I was sorry. And then um, there was this man standing by his car with his boot open. And then he came up to me and um, pulled back his, pulled his hands were like that, and then pulled them back like that, and so no. And then he goes, don't scream, I've got a knife. I won't hurt you, I'm just happy. 
And then I start screaming. And then he grabs As me you should. with his free hand. And I keep praying, please don't hurt me. And screaming, and he's telling me to shut up and everything like that. On the day of the attack, um, the reason why I was walking home was because we just played a netball match. This one's me getting in the way. Terrible shot from whoever this was. <laughs> netball was my This um, hair is an adult. Sport. That's I'd, this is crazy. <laughs> I um I managed to get into the A team and uh that was a very big achievement. Gosh. So young. After the attack, I I just wanted to get back to normal as soon as possible. You know, the first few weeks was really hard. There was one time where, for whatever reason, my- You see though? You see what I'm talking about though? Like, I don't want to blame the parents or anything. Whatever. It was a different time back then where they probably didn't have to think like this. But me, I would have been at the game. Ain't no walking home. I would have been there. Come on, let's go. It's just me. My friends didn't wait for me, so I had to walk that bit on my own. And that was the only time I really allowed myself... L friends. ...to break down. And then I think it was almost like a, well, you can't, you can't keep doing this. Just get on with it, because... And that, that's, you know... I guess where I'm at now with being quite emotional about it, that I'm maybe looking back and seeing the impacts it has had and not really noticing at the time or thinking about it at the time that it had that effect. Um, but yeah, something like that just doesn't really go away. It would just be crazy how these things be affecting people's lives for the rest of their lives. Like they think they've dealt with it, but there's underlying retention of the situation still in you, and it's affecting relationships. It's affecting everything. Up in it. it is, but I didn't particularly notice it when he's speaking. No, you're right. When he speaks, you don't. No. you don't notice it. No, and he was speaking to them all His the time. His top lip covers. Yeah, some of it anyway, doesn't it? Yeah. There are some dissimilarities from him today to the girl's description back in 2002, which were, I mean, he has got quite a distinctive gap between his front teeth, which looking at old photographs of him, he's always had. Um, and that's not mentioned by any of the girls. Although one of them does mention him having odd teeth, but not to the point where they've mentioned a gap in his teeth. Mm, a, is gap, a gap is an anomaly, a non, what is it called? Anomaly. Like it's a rare thing. Yeah, front, it's a, it's a rare thing. I think it'd be a call, accounted for. You know what I'm saying? Really weird. That's the only part that it seemed like I can remember. But yeah, nothing about his teeth. We are at the moment hanging on to that DNA. If it's not his DNA, then we continue with our investigation and we find out whose DNA it is. I'm not going to read this all the way out. So, uh, Operation Weave, 1993 kidnapping of a 26-year-old. 26. What does it feel like doing this walk now? It's, um, I know around the corner what was there, you know. Yeah, so it kind of... Makes you take a bit of a breath, really, I guess. I don't really like um, town at night now. It's just, it's not really the same for me. No. This is where these big black it's gates Karen are. Karen and Karen's daughter. Right across the road that are closed. This is what used to be the Coliseum nightclub. It's actually barred up now. I'm not sure if it's anything anymore. On the day of the incident, it was actually my birthday. It was my 26th birthday. I was out with a, a group of 
really, really close girlfriends. Um, we were having a great time, just, just having fun. And I came out of the nightclub, turned left and walked down this road. I never came back here after, no. Where your friends was at? That's what I'm saying, man. Y'all got to walk in packs. It's unfortunate that that's what, that, that's what it got to be, but it has to be that, even now. I was walking up here past where the trees are, and um, then there was one car there with its window open, and the man inside saying, where are we going? Where am I going? So I got in the taxi. And a walk from town to where you live is about a five minute walk from yeah. town? Yeah. Just straight down? Yeah, yeah. I really regret being lazy that night. That's that's the way I look at it. If I wasn't so it was a lazy taxi that driver? night and had have just walked five minutes instead of getting a taxi. And it wasn't until we were supposed to go straight and we didn't go straight, he did a left, that I realised, hold on a minute, something's not right. And after, I don't know, a few minutes, I kind of started to feel a little bit uneasy and he was saying things like, um, you haven't got a fucking clue where, where you are, have you, you stupid bitch? And, you haven't got a fucking clue, have you? You just haven't got a fucking clue. And at that point, I'm kind of looking, thinking I haven't got a clue about what. You never, ever think something like this is going to happen to you. His voice changed. The only way I can describe it is kind of like a spiteful, nasty voice. His whole face changed. His whole face changed. He looked completely evil. I believe you. And people be having demons in them, man. The demons will rise up, man. They can hide themselves, and then when the time comes, they at the forefront. That's when you be seeing people. If you ever look at somebody who's really mad and they're yelling at you, look at them. It, sometimes it don't even be looking like them, and they like overdoing it. Like you overdoing it, you dragging it, ain't you? Look at them. They don't even sound the same. They don't even. That's the type of people you pray for. And then um, all of a sudden, we turned left into what appeared to be garages, which was quite dark. What shocked me the most was how quickly he got from the driver's seat and then how swift my bottom half of clothing came down. And he had my hands pinned. He was very, very efficient. And one of the weirdest things was um, he was kissing me on the lips like a, a boyfriend would or something or trying to. And I remember his teeth hitting, because my teeth, they stick out a little bit. It was a very aggressive thing as well, because it actually hurt my mouth. Um, I suppose when, when you're in that situation as well, you've got to focus on the lesser of the, lesser of the devilish things, I guess. You just go into survival mode. And I thought, best thing to do here is just to let him do whatever he wants to do to survive to get back to my son. This is where I got out of the taxi, fell out of the car, really, and then I sat on the curb because my legs just wouldn't carry me. There was just no way of finding this guy because what we've got to remember in 1993, there weren't CCTV cameras. It's 1993? We didn't have mobile phones. DNA was very much in its infancy. So there was just no way of them progressing with the case. Bed, Bedfordshire. So this is the original case file. What we did is we located as much of the paperwork that we could. It, it's not that, I mean, you'll see, it's not that we have a huge amount of paperwork, but the, what we do have, we have the original e-fit of the suspect that Karen produced at the time with the help of, um, like, a police artist. Then there's a description of the suspect, which says Asian male, slim build, 19 to 21 years, 5 foot 8 to 5 foot 10, 
greasy, oily black hair, long, thin nose. You know, she had that side profile of him in the car for such a long time, and she was saying he had what she would describe as a Roman nose. His front teeth were, were very prominent. Those features are things that don't change. So it right, was very really nice right. to have that as well. My favourite part of being a police officer is definitely the cold cases I've worked on, re-engaging with victims of crimes where people have perhaps thought that nothing was ever going to happen for them. But with the absence of DNA evidence, your investigation is very unlikely to progress the case any further. What did I say? Hold on. Eurofins Forensic Service. Oh, Staffordshire. Eurofins Forensic Services provides the forensic support for multiple police forces. My areas of expertise include the identification of body fluids, the interpretation of DNA profiling results. Hi, Tosh. Hi. Right, so what we're looking at today, this is uh, Operation Weave. Mm -hmm. So this is alleged rape of a lady called Karen. In 1993, she jumped into what she believed to be a taxi. Okay. The case was examined previously at the Forensic Science Service in 1993. Mm -hmm. They found semen on her knickers and also on her intimate swabs. The swabs have been retained. Um, so we're going to re-examine them, try and find more semen, try and obtain a DNA profile, yep. and hopefully we can, we can load something to the DNA database. OK. So semen was detected in 93, but the DNA profile as we know it now didn't exist. So the idea of taking swabs, I, I guess, in, in the 80s and 90s was to corroborate the victim's account where the semen was present. Advances in forensics now allow us to revisit cases that were previously examined 10, 20, 30 years ago, whereby only small amounts of material, cellular material or semen was recovered, insufficient to obtain a, a profile at the time. So what I'm doing now is adding the extraction buffer, which will draw out any potential sperm heads in the sample. Using our modern day techniques, we can now reassess these cases, re-examine any material that remains. That's why people be so surprised when you, when like a dude, when they knocked on his door, he was surprised. Like, hold on, that was 40 years ago, or however long, 20 years ago. Ah, uh, buddy, science then caught up. And guess where you're going? To jail? <laughs> you really? Hopefully, recover any cells or, or sperm heads that were missed originally. So we stain the sperm heads a different colour to the background so we can see them more clearly. How are we looking, Tash? I can confirm that our sperm heads present. That's great news, that is. I'm on about mm, 13 or 14. I used to love science. That's like the only class that I found interesting. Everything else was stupid. <laughs> no offense, math, not using it as an adult, barely. But I'm not saying that I can't do math, but I do. There's no situation that I use it every day. Science, though, you see science every day. You, you see numbers every day, too, but you see science in nature every day. You just see it working in their house every day. You see it all the time. Like, it's always been, like, very captivating, low-key. I was passing science and things. I was paying attention. Somewhat. At the minute. Should we get the sample prepped and sent for DNA profiling? Yep, let's do it. I've previously examined other swabs in cold cases, some of which had more semen on than in this instance, and they'd unfortunately not given DNA profiles. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed that there's a match. Yeah, it's got a hope at this point, then, huh? We're going back, OK. Read it. I've read it enough. Let me check if I understand it, though. Let me 
hit them. Yes. They hit him. You're kidding me. No. What does it say? It's it says, really short. It just says a complete DNA profile obtained from this sample. This profile matches Alec Carlson's reference the, DNA profile. It's yeah, dangerous. buddy. We'll see you in jail, buddy. Or I won't. But them, 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 them people in there that take cheeks will. So. Finding would be at least one billion mm. times more likely that it originated from him than any unrelated. Insane. Have you got the email? Yes. 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 <laughs> uh, one in a billion. <laughs> one in a little shit. That's amazing. That's brilliant news, isn't it? That's, That's insane. Brilliant. Yeah. That's going to be an interesting interview. See you in a minute. Bye, 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 bye. Yeah, one in a billion is tough. <laughs> you ain't going to talk away your way about, out of this one. 20 years that little fucker's talking. Yeah, 20 fucking years. What did she say about him? My bad. 20 years that little fucker's talking. Yeah, 20 fucking years. Not wrong. Those victims find that long. Well, they were buzzing enough when they heard we'd arrested someone. We all wanted to catch him because he's a dangerous individual who lived a life of Riley for the last 20 years getting away with these horrendous attacks. Right, and who knows how many more he's done? How many people haven't come and stepped up? and Not stepped up, but how many people haven't been brave enough yet to come forth and things of that nature? But like, he, yeah, man. And he actually thought he'd got away with it. Right. He didn't start a family. He just got married. Got kids, grandkids. How dare you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Alec, this is our second interview with you today. That's where Are it's you feeling get. fit and well to be interviewed? I, I just obviously I've had a tough old day and, yeah. and had a few sort of heart palpitations earlier and chest pains, but yeah. I, I'm alright at the moment. Okay. Well, you better get a neurologist in here or, 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 or uh, what's this one called? Uh, 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 uh. You better get a doctor in here, because it's about to go down, buddy. Hope you got a pack of Tums with you. Now, obviously, we do need to put um, the new evidence to you, given to your solicitor prior to this interview, which I'm sure you have discussed. I mean, we know that this is your DNA. It is one in a billion. No comment. You ain't got a comment. Obviously, we haven't got a DNA hit from the third offence. Um, however, it's so similar, isn't it? No comment. It's so similar to what's happened from description, from location, from the words that we use. Do you not want to explain what's happened? No comment. Do you feel upset about what's happened? No comment. Do you care about no what's comment. happened? Do you care about the impact that this has had on the victims? No comment. We've got three young girls and this has absolutely had an impact on their lives. No comment. Um, is there anything at all that you want to say about these offences? No comment. Okay. In which case, um, we will end the interview. Hey, Blue. He looks like a different person now. Amazing. My goodness. How long is this shift so far? <laughs> okay. About 21 hours in. He's been put back in his cell and we have put together the paperwork for CPS for charging advice this evening. This morning. <laughs> it's now the early hours of the morning. Um, it was crazy. So How many years? To, um, getting him charged with all of the offence. How many years y'all think he gonna get? He got the K-I-D-N-A-P-P-I-N-G and another charge twice. I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say he going to get all of six years, six, seven years. That's what I would say. Which is in custody. 
what do you think your chances are? I think they're good in relation to obviously the first two offences and with the comparisons on the paperwork in relation to the third... Hold on. ...third offence, I think we stand a good chance of getting all of them, to be honest. Um, so we'll give it a go. Hello. Yeah, right. Okay, I said six years. In the chat, they saying six to nine. Somebody said ten. Somebody said seven to eight. Sixteen to twenty. He'll do eight or ten. Eight or ten. Hey, sorry. I think they give him six. They he do. I think they give him seven. He do four. Mm. We can't get through. No. No answer. You're always sat there with your computer on and waiting by your phone. You don't want to hurry people, but you're also under time pressures yourself. So it's just holding your nerve, I suppose, and, and just letting them do their work. They should ring you back within an hour. On the, but then I've been on phone for an hour and a half already. So it's bizarre. I haven't waited this long for ages. I mean, we'll go right to the wire with this, I imagine. And just hope that we get... If he walks out of here, I'll be absolutely spewing. Yeah, it's always a bit of an anxious way, but we got there in the end. Alec Housden was charged with five offences. He was charged with two offences of indecent assault from 2002 two offences of kidnapping from 2002 and the offence of kidnapping in 2004. He'd been caught now and he'd been charged. Now, let me regroup. Let me regroup because that, that KID, N-A-P-P-I-N-G charge, that might be a little bit more. Hold on. Let me... All right. I say 12. 12 years. I say 12. That's my guess. All right. Now I'm good. ...with everything that we had suspected him of. And so it was just the best feeling ever. And especially knowing that I then need to tell the victims of all those offences that this has happened. Back to the 26 year. When the incident first occurred, my agoraphobia was absolutely chronic i mean not even being able to get out of your own front door it was complete paranoia as well i think a lot of the time i still have days where i'm battling mentally with everything and you just need to lay there be quiet be by yourself because for some people just to put their feet out of bed and go and brush their teeth in the morning is is an amazing success they don't realize how much strength that's taken. At the time of the incident, I had a long-term boyfriend. I'd been with him maybe five years. Two weeks after the incident, I found out that I was pregnant and um, I was completely unaware whether it was the, the man who kidnapped and raped me, oh, or man. My, my boyfriend. It was a battle every single minute of every single day, I would say, for the nine months. Oh, my God. What a pregnancy and bringing a life into the world is supposed to be a joyous occasion, and she just went through it the whole nine months. That's not tough. Not to break. I didn't know whether the child was going to come out um, mixed race, Asian or not. So I've never been so pleased to see a pair of blue eyes and blonde hair in my life. In this case, that's a good thing to say. Yes, yes, yes. And Talk to him. You were healthy and you had bright eyes and, and you were perfect. So that's good. It's me as a baby at the christening. Is it? Mm-hmm. That one. That's Erin's christening. You put on a smile for the camera, don't you? So where are you there, Karen? Um, In the red. 
yeah, what do you see? Um, somebody who's very sad underneath. Um, somebody that's very good at putting a mask on around that period was probably the worst time to be taking photos of me, so. That's the craziest thing people can look. I ain't gonna lie, she look good. God damn. <laughs> hey, talk to him, ma'am. Despite everything that went on in your life, unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? She did have that 90s do on her. My bad, I'm trying to, this is a serious moment. I'm just, I just had to. Historically, maybe 20, 30 years ago, if we're only finding a couple of sperm heads in, your expectation of obtaining a profile from such small amounts of biological material would have been on the whole quite low. Thankfully, with modern day extraction, the recovery of biological materials is far greater. And in this case, a full DNA profile was obtained, which was loaded onto the National DNA Database. A single match was obtained against Saheed Majid. Mm. Yeah, they got a nose. Look at broke collar. It's crazy. His name was on the DNA database because he was arrested for another offence. I do wonder at what point somebody who knows of committed crimes thinks, I wonder if that knock will ever come on my door. Yeah, it's coming, buddy. Maybe he's been waiting for it. Okay. We've been asked to come out to, uh, well, basically, I'll, I'll let this officer explain what we're here. Right, okay. And then we'll get it sorted out as quick as we can. Sure. Okay. okay um, right, so, Toby, at the moment, um, I'm going to be arresting you, okay, on suspicion of rape. So you don't have to say it again. If you let me explain, I'll explain it. Read that. So, well, yeah, this occurred on Sunday the 14th of November in 1993 um, in a garage on Hitchin Road, Luton. There certainly didn't seem any anger i'm sure if i was being arrested for something i hadn't done i'd like to think i'd be showing a little bit more emotion well, I'm going to find my missus. You, you can do but you don't discuss what you've been arrested for Very true. Oh, okay. oh okay they actually do tell you not to discuss what you've been arrested for okay in a higher level of protest of innocence where there was none of that which i found quite remarkable really Rape is one of the most difficult charges to bring because even with the presence of forensic evidence, we still have to navigate defences such as consent. It's not just looking at the actual incident itself, it's about gathering as much information that surrounds the offence to prove or to disprove what is being said by either the suspect or the victim. What they hold brilliantly is still the original application that he filled in um, when he applied to become a taxi driver. And, mm. and the knowledge check actually says that he was never a taxi driver prior to this application to become a taxi driver in 2000. At the time of the offence, it transpired that he actually worked for Vauxhall Motors, I think almost on a production line. Wow. So he wasn't even a taxi driver, wasn't even a real taxi driver. He capped through, they kept the applications and found out he wasn't. Now we know that he wasn't a taxi driver. For me, that says... A lot. You knew exactly what you were doing. You acted like a predator where you could find and isolate a victim. Bro, that's lure weird. Them into your car. That's weird. The whole plot, you plotting like this? You was at the crib plotting? Premeditated? Like. <sighs> oh, and then take them away and rape them. So he formed the intent to commit that rape before he sat there. He didn't just sit there to give somebody a lift home. 
that wasn't his intent. So the reason you've been arrested today is, is because you've been arrested on suspicion of a rape that happened in 1993 on a female called Karen. Okay? Okay. Let's just try and, and go back all the way to 1993. Who, who'd you, who would you have worked for then? Uh, we Well, back in 1993. So what about your taxi licence then? Would you have had that back then? Oh yeah, I mean, you couldn't drive a taxi without a licence. Okay. Yeah. What was your relationship with your wife like back then? Really? Yeah. Have you ever been on Facebook? Oh, he was wife? married. No. You haven't? Never. The victim of this rape. What she's saying is the driver has got a bit. Look how the lawyer looked at him like, bro, you in here lying like this? Victim of this rape. What she's saying is the driver has got a bit nasty, mm -hmm. um, jumps over the car and forces himself on top of her and holds her up against the chair uh, with force. Right. Um, and she says the next thing she knows, she feels something hard against her legs and realises it's his erect penis. Right. She says she was struggling. She was trying to stop you putting the penis inside her. Um, but you use your right hand to push your penis into her vagina. And she describes you fondling her breasts. Yeah, so um, I've, got, I've got to be an octopus then. Uh, so you're telling me that I'm holding both her hands. Well, you're, that's what yeah. you're telling me, right? Yeah. At one point. Oh, so at one point, so I'm holding yeah. both her arms. Yeah. yeah. And then. We're trying to be a comedian in here? You're saying that on the other hand. Uh, on, uh, on a separate. On a separate during that incident. Right. Okay. That's her account. That's her okay. account. Okay. Um, and he ejaculates inside her. Right. And mm. we believe that person is you. It's not me. They got DNA, buddy. She's done an evil fit of the person that okay. she thinks um, has committed the offence. And, and this is the original document, okay. so I just want to show you that. Right. Okay? Yeah, it doesn't look anything like me. You, well, yeah. in 1993. Well, sir, I I beg to differ. It looked like a younger you. But it still would never... I would never look like that. Well, my hair will be totally long. Yeah. Or totally short. It would never be like that. Well, it has to get to a certain length to get long, doesn't it? No, you don't understand. My hair was either long or short. Is, but how did it get long from being short? What do you mean? <laughs> how did you get so it? Grew. Your, hair, your hair is short now, yes. and if you decided... Not to cut it. Yep. Yes. It's going to grow. Exactly. And one of those growing stages would be this length, yes? Yeah. Maybe. OK. Bro, just say no comment, because you are spinning yourself into it. So, you're denying rape. 100%. You're denying um, picking up anyone um, in a taxi that you that hasn't been booked. That's correct. Um, and you're denying having sex with anyone in 1990. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to HQ for the tier one gifted sub to Brendy. We all know she deserves it. We've obviously got a database. Yeah. And when people are arrested, their DNA is put on the database and you've been arrested before. Right. Yep, so we've got your DNA. And so the DNA that we've picked... There's two things that the cops have, borderline three, two and a possibility that you can't shake. DNA, forensics, you're not shaking it. You're never shaking that. Once they got that, you're done. That police helicopter. You know what I'm saying? And I forgot the other one while I was thinking. It'll come back to me. Hold on. Oh, A and PR. The, them three things is tough. Top on her clothing is hit against your DNA on the database. Okay. Okay. Can you explain that? Mm. You can. I can't. 
Can you explain how any of your DNA could be found on her nickels? No. Is there any explanation as to why your sperm would have been found in her high vaginal spots? No. And your semen has been found it's up here. It is your semen, sir. It's not. It is not my semen. It is. It is. I'm telling you, it's not. Hundred percent, it's not my semen. Well, unfortunately, we can't really argue with DNA, can we? Because our, our DNA is all very unique to ourselves. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you were over there saying while you sitting over there, you're not shaking it. Oh, it's not me, guaranteed. No, it's just DNA. It's it's yours. It's your body's signature. Is you. Right. I don't know how DNA works. This DNA. Then be quiet and say no comment. Is your DNA, and it's been found inside her vagina, and there's only one explanation, and that you've had sex with her. That's not what I mean. Hundred percent. Can you give us a reasonable? It's actually zero percent that it could not have been, because it's a hundred percent you. Explanation as to why that's not inside her vagina. Then. All right. I I may have had consensual sex out of marriage. May, I, but I can't remember. Yeah. Is is this his lawyer next to him or no? <clears throat> Do you want to try and remember? We have a few weeks after. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah. If there's deniability of knowing the victim, then of course having the DNA match shows that that is inconsistent with the account that is being provided. Majid initially said he didn't know. Karen. Bro just dug himself a crazy hole and it's all recorded on video and tape. That's why you just shut the, just be, I mean, if you're gonna lie, just be quiet, just don't say nothing. He said he'd never had sexual intercourse out of marriage, but another lie. the DNA evidence that was put to him in an interview that actually made him accept that this wasn't going away. A man has pleaded guilty to kidnapping and indecently assaulting okay, here we go. teenage girls in Harpenden 20 years ago. 59-year-old Alec Housden originally denied the attacks. But changed his plea. He pleaded out, though. He pleaded out. He pleaded out. He didn't go to trial with it. So you know, you go to trial, you gonna they gonna give you the maximum sentence there is. He pled out. So let's see. Mr. Housden has entered guilty pleas in relation to four offences, which um, cover the t first two victims. So the seventh of April, two thousand and two, and the nineteenth of June, two thousand and two. Um, he's entered a not guilty plea to the 2004 offence, so George's offence. There's mixed emotions, really, because you're really pleased, or I'm really pleased, for the victims that he has pleaded guilty for. But we've still got another victim. I'm still, I still think he's going to get like 11. Who is waiting for their day in court. With that plea. So we've still got a lot of work to do. to know what some of these things are. Oh, so that's the original incident report, the 2004 one. In my opinion, Alec Housden is responsible for all three attacks. Just everything about George's offence is too similar for it to be anybody else. But obviously, we have to prove that. That's um, Harpenden CCTV. Oh, OK. Well, we might need that. The other end. The focus of the investigation now, following the guilty pleas, is doing everything we can to link him to Georgia and her case from 2004. So I know she says about a knife, doesn't she, as yeah, well? Yeah, she draws one, look. That's the exhibit that she's drawn an interview. Forensically, we've submitted every single thing that we have got in relation to Georgia's attack. Oh, she was wearing a T-shirt and her school blazer at the time she was grabbed and she was dragged and I would have suspected for a prolonged period of dragging you would find some DNA on that blazer somewhere. So I'm screening this blazer for semen. Saliva was previously found on the shoulder 
um, and sent to DNA. However, there was no profile obtained from that saliva. OK. We're just going to wet the item, pat it down with some blotting paper, and then spray it with AP, which is acid phosphate, which, if it comes into contact with semen, turn purple. It does say he grabbed her shoulder. And she screamed out, and someone came and interrupted. But sometimes semen might be transferred on hands. So fingers crossed we will find something. We know that the offender on George's offence was with a silver vehicle. We also know Alec Housden was in possession of. <laughs> Boy, they got every piece of everything still 20 years later. The silver vehicle at the time of the very first offence. So now we can go back through AMPR cameras, CCTV, and just see whether we can actually link it all together. If we manage to find a silver car that we could attribute to our offender, that puts him in the location on the date and at the time of the offence. That just yeah, adds to our case, really, when it, when it comes to trial. It would be the best result for... They do a maximum due diligence on this dude. ...everybody to get that small nugget to definitively link Alec Houston. But unless we get that DNA from George's attack, it's not that straightforward. So... Nothing. Yeah, negative. There's no indication that semen is present. Nothing has reacted to the acid phosphate. We're also looking at his laptops, um, telephones, anything like that, looking for search history to see if he'd shown any interest in the offence or if he had any interest in anything else that might be linked to our offence. They're trying to jam him with yeah. everything. He specifically searches for Romeo and Juliet Topless. This actress. She was 15 when filming started, but she was 16 when the scene was shot. Another actress. But she is 14. Another actress. She looks very young as well, but she's she's still quite young. Oh nice busty teens topless. And busty teen fucked. Old schoolgirl babe screwed by her stepdad. Stepdaughter with huge tits. There's some horrible searches on here. I like to actively search for a category like that. It definitely shows that he has a a type, and That's crazy. we know from our victims that they looked broadly, well, very similar in terms of age and... That man, search history is going crazy. Just in ge general appearance, they look very... They just look very young. Stormy Daniels dresses like a schoolgirl, a little schoolgirl. Mm. It's disgusting. I know this is a serious moment, but like 95% of anybody watching this knows who that is. Anyway. I think at least two of his ex-partners have told us that he had a thing for schoolgirls, and that was one of his sexual sort of kinks or preferences or whatever, so. That's weird. Yeah. Damn. Georgia, what we'd like to do today is ask you to walk the exact route that you took that evening, and then we're going to walk away from where that incident happened. Although there's a little bit of managing expectations with Georgia, obviously, because we don't know <laughs> what the outcome wild. is going to be at the moment. Round okay. about here, you've noticed the silver car. Yeah. OK, where was that silver car? In between. We are doing everything we possibly can to get her the justice she deserves. Please say that it might not go to trial. And, you know, you're aware of that, Georgia. You're aware of that. Like, um, I'm, I'm, you know, just wanting to, you know, it's managing expectations. You've buried it for so long. You've continued on with your life. And then all of a sudden, to be given the opportunity to get what you really want, which is him, to then be told, no, it might not happen. 
It's really hard. The best outcome for me would, of course, be for there to be that forensic link to him, um, because that means longer in prison. Just to keep him in there, just to keep him away. Because the damage he's done to enough people, he does not deserve to be having a normal life. You can see the pain in her soul. A man accused of a kidnapping happened in 19 years ago is standing oh, trial at some... This Georgia's court date is what it says. First Corbin's day. Crown Court today. Alec Housden, who's now age 59, denies carrying out the offence in March 2004. In 2003, he reports a theft from a motor vehicle when it's parked at his home address, which was a silver car. But we've now actually managed to track down who he was working for at the time, who have confirmed that it was a company car um, that he had access to, and it did cover our offence date, which is obviously great. Before you want to use um, evidence of people's previous convictions, because they're similar to the case that they're on trial for, we have to make a bad character application, and it's down to the judge to decide whether to allow that material to go before the jury. Uh, that's a tough route. It's uh, a tough route to take. If the bad character argument goes in our favour, then obviously it strengthens our case hugely. So it may be that at that stage, he feels that because our case is that much stronger, he may want to plead guilty. All to play for today, yeah. So we'll just have to wait and see. This is the 26 year old. Okay. There's only two cases in this? Investigation. We have now retained Majid's police national record, and he'd been arrested in 1988 for a rape of another female. This young lady got into a vehicle with him, believing that he was going to give her a lift home, but he drove her to an isolated spot and raped her. But in 1988, he was acquitted. Oh, oh, well. 306, 1506. Okay, Major, you just had a small consultation with your solicitor. Have you had enough time to speak to him? I oh, have. Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to say to us now you've had an extra consultation? Well, I have, I have had uh, consensual sex after marriage, mm -hmm. uh, but I cannot remember uh, because it's been so long, it's been 25 years. Well, I would never, ever rape anybody. How many times have you had consensual sex after? Maybe twice. Maybe? Yeah. Where did you have sex with them? Maybe in the car. I can't. I, to tell you the truth, I don't know. Ago. I mean, it's a long time ago. I mean, I, I, don't, I can't even remember what I had for breakfast last week. Yeah? Having sex outside of marriage is a little bit different to comparing it to having a bowler. Exactly. <laughs> every man, though, every time he cheated almost. But me, Bosties, I don't got to worry about things like that because I don't cheat when I am in a relationship, which is rare. I understand, but I just cannot remember. You've been arrested for a rape before, haven't you? No coming. Do you remember that? No coming. And that the allegation then was similar, that you approached a female at a bus stop under the pretext of giving her a lift home. Did you pretend to be a taxi driver on that? No coming. Was she one of the two girls no that coming. you mentioned about having no comment. consensual sex with? No coming. Is it a coincidence that two women have alleged that you've raped them? No comment. Or is it that you 
His lawyer finally advised him, no comment, because this man was digging that hole crazy. Women. Right. I'm going to conclude the interview. Okay, it's 15.50 and the interview is concluded, okay? Very quickly after his arrest, we were able to put the file together and submit it to CPS and within a relatively short period of time, they came back with an answer to say, yeah, we're going to charge. A man from Luton who posed as a taxi driver to kidnap and rape a woman 28 years ago has been jailed for 13 years. Yeah, his lawyer is terrible. Definitely. <laughs> He said he ain't getting a good Google review after this. That's funny, but this is not a funny situation. Google, I don't condone anything. 54-year-old Zahid Majid was caught after his DNA was matched. To it. Success is standing in front of a victim and saying, we've done it, we've got through this, and not only have we always believed you, but now 12 jurors have believed you. It was that DNA evidence that changed the course of the interview and the direction of the investigation that showed Majid as responsible for the rape. It might have taken 27 years, but justice was served in the end. The end the I was absolutely convinced that he probably wouldn't get found guilty of it because it was so long ago. And then the judge, she said, right, 13 years. It was very, very difficult for me to hold the tears back. He got 13 years? Wait, how long did he get? 13. That's the that's for the 26-year-old, okay. The emotion. Dang. Is that the one that we was... 13 years? The look he gave me when he was sentenced was absolute disgust. And that's what reminded me that he could still be quite dangerous to me. Yeah, that other dude, he probably gonna get more now. Now that I've seen what she got, what this dude and got, he did double the, double the stuff. You know what I'm saying? He might get a, a 20 piece. He might get a 20, 20 piece nugget. He's in jail now, I'm not. I'm walking free. My life is opening up. He is completely restricted and he's gonna be restricted for the rest of his life. Thirteen, that's a big number for the UK. Inadmissible. Uh, I knew it. That wasn't going to be. I'm disappointed. My personal view is that we haven't got the wrong person for that offence. Um, but when the judge ruled um, that we couldn't use the bad character evidence, our case wouldn't have made any sense as to how we identified or got to Mr. Housden. That's sometimes just the way the law works. Um, I'm obviously disappointed for the third victim. I think the biggest thing is to remember is that actually for two of those victims that were horrendously sexually assaulted and grabbed off the street by a stranger, we have now got some justice, you know, 20 years on. So hopefully that will save them sort of looking over their shoulder and thinking that man could grab me again at any time because he's going to be safely in prison. It's just a shame we couldn't get all three. Right. It's hard. But then also, you know, the, the knowing that he's, he's, he is going to be behind bars. 
it's more than just a silver lining because like, what it's going to mean to the other two girls, he's not going to be able to do this again. And it has been recognised, the horrible things that he has done. And I think it's, it's you know, you can compartmentalise that. Um, and I think it will take time for me to bring it together, but I've been able to get on since I was 12. Um, so I think I'll be able to do it again. <laughs> so she 34? 16 years. What did I say? I said 16, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, what just happened? Oh, okay. When the incident first occurred, my agoraphobia was absolutely chronic. I mean, not even... Be oh, no, no. This is this, uh, um... Yeah, we've seen this already. Yeah, we've seen this part. Alright, uh, TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification. Remember, be brave. If this has happened to you, tell somebody. I ain't even gonna hold you. Go ahead, tell somebody, man. I'm gone.